Hello Ratbags, it's Joe Plays Games. Welcome to a special Atlas video. Today, I'm going to be showing you the full map for Atlas. As of recording, the game hasn't actually gone live, but there has been some looks at the map itself via the map editor. Some streamers on Twitch, including Tim Mac, got a chance to delve into the files while they're waiting for the servers to go live. That, combined with something I found already, gives us a real good example showing you how you're going to be traversing the map, what biomes are in the map, and generally what to expect when you're exploring the waters of Atlas. So come with me, let's go, let's explore the Atlas map. So Tim Mack posted this picture on Twitter, it indicates all the stuff to do with the map, the editor. And if you don't know, you are going to be able to edit your own custom map if you rent a server. I'm with Natredo and I've already seen that there is going to be ways that you can add and do whatever you want with your own rentable server. Who knows, maybe in the future Atlas will bring something to single player, but don't forget the game is only online at the beginning and I don't think they have any plans as of yet. But what this shows is that all the islands aren't actually that unique. Despite the claims of there being 700 unique landmasses, it looks like a lot of them have been repeated. Of course, the game is early access, lots can change, and who knows, lots may have changed since these maps were produced, but this comes from the game files. So it does look like lots of the landmasses are the same. Anyway, but there is a bunch of other information that I can show you using this. The creator of this Rage Molten Gaming community has got a Discord. I will leave the link down below. Now, there has been versions of this going around where we saw the map and we saw some markers that indicated what the free ports are going to be. I'm going to show you that in a second, but this gives us a real close-up of the actual islands to the point that we can literally see every part of the landmass, how it curves around. What's really unique as well about this atlasmap.com that this guy has built is that you can actually predict and show where you're going to plan your route. It actually gives a proper time of how long it's going to take to get across the map. If you don't know, according to the developers, approximately 30 hours to get from one side of the map to the other. Now, the map isn't a globe, but it is literally like Pac-Man. If I decide to go off the edge of the world here, I'll actually appear on this side of the map. The map really doesn't have any loading screens in between these areas. Now, ignore the grid system here. This isn't the actual grid system. It is a little bit smaller. If anything, this will be more akin to what you're maybe looking at. Now, originally PC Gamer did include a picture of the map in their article. As you can see from this image, it really didn't seem like it was going to be the map. I, for one, didn't believe it was going to be the full map. It honestly doesn't look like it's that great a map being made. And particularly if this is going to be the map in game, I just felt it lacked a little bit of polish. But UTC, a YouTuber, did say this was going to be the map, so hats off to him for being right. Now, according to this article, there's going to be around seven different biomes in the game, but we can take a proper look at that in a second. And according to PC Gamer interview recently that they done a couple days ago, there's going to be 21 biomes overall. Now, the map doesn't have a fog of war, so what you actually see in game will change depending on where you have ships and bases. There's also the sextant, an item which you can use to increase the area of the map you can see around you, blinding it up with the stars. Now that does contradict some early information saying that the map would be clouded because that's why you would need the sextant to be able to see where you're going. We also know that if you send people up to the top of your crow's nest, they can also get a little bit more verification of what's around you, like exploration points, as well as discovery zones nearby. So if we toggle on the biomes, we get a chance to look at every single biome currently in the game. It does look like the north and the south is going to have very cold biomes, and there is even going to be a desert. Let's go through it completely. The western tundra, polar, central tundra, and eastern tundra. So at the very top, these areas are all going to be very ice-filled, very snow-filled. And as we go down a little bit more further south, we'll find maps that have a little bit of extra land and not just completely snow. Then we've got western temperament, high desert, eastern temperament. Again, this is going to be very much based on a desert format. The western and eastern will have a little bit more vegetation on it. Then the western tropics, the low desert, eastern tropics. Expect this to be very much jungle-like, with the low desert maybe being a little bit flatter, whereas the high desert may have a few more mountains as it's quite close to the north. Then we've got the equatorial centre, and supposedly this is where you have to summon the bosses. It would explain why there is absolutely nothing in the middle of the map. 
Then we've just got a simple repeat. It's the Western Tropics, the Low Desert, the Eastern Tropics, the Eastern Temperament, the High Desert, the Western Temperament. So literally just like a actual globe, you will have cold on the North and cold on the South. So if I want to get from one spot to the other, you can really use this to navigate exactly how you're going to get there. Ignore my um, ship directional skills right here. I'm just doing this as an example. Now, according to Tim Mack, based on what he's hearing, if there's going to be 40,000 players, each grid or each zone will hold 178 players. That is far and above what we're used to playing Arc Survival Evolved. Now, here's a slightly better picture in more full color. This is kind of what I was expecting to see in game. Maybe this will only be like the War Room style map that you can pin up somewhere. But this is definitely more what I was expecting rather than this very generic blue map. And someone else has gone to the trouble of pinpointing some areas that they found from the files. They referenced this against what they'd found by looking at the install files when the game was up. And this was when it first got put on Steam. So this has been going around for a few days now. But it more or less fits in with everything we've seen from the other maps. There is a tundra to the north. There is tundras to the south. It also lists some of the other stuff as well like the Freeport locations and where Golden Age ruins are. As you can see, there are free ports everywhere. You've got some in the north, in the desert area. So these are the spots that you're going to be spawning in the game. Remember, the free ports are PvE until a certain cap. So you can't be harmed while you're there, or when you're just starting out at least. So pretty, pretty interesting stuff. So supposedly, remember from the PC article and what they've put on their blurb on the Steam page, the Atlas map is going to be 1,200 times bigger than the Arc map. So when you boil that down, imagine one of these grids, imagine the map being a, maybe a little bit bigger than this landmass here, then you can easily say why they're going to claim it's bigger. And maybe not just in terms of how flat it is, but maybe with vertical and underwater exploration as well. So people need to get used to this idea of maybe not building just completely on land. There are plenty of islands to go and do that, of course, but this is a pirate game. It is about sailing the seas. We've seen plenty of screenshots and the trailer action showing the different types of creatures and possibly some of the resources that we're going to be getting. You can see the ostrich there in the desert area and we've got boars and then you can see more of the free ports so this is what you kind of expect in these zones and then this is maybe like the temperate place or maybe the tundra you can see the mountains in the background and of course this is more the ice biome. All these biomes are going to have unique creatures to them, they're going to have unique resources and the idea is that you're going to have to sail far and wide to gather some of the precious stuff you need to get to the end game. I am really excited, I'm not too keen on taming and I keep repeating that because I don't want this game to turn into just a taming simulator, I'd rather it focus more on the pirate life but it is good for adding quests and it is good for PvE, if you set your mind to it you want to go and get some ostriches or whatever they are then you're going to have to think about seriously sailing to the right location the resources needed the supplies and of course in pvp whether or not it's worth the risk going to get a specific team or if you're going to be stocking up on certain resources you really are going to have to plan your routes you really are going to have to take into effect as well other things like wind direction traveling on the seas and the hurricanes don't forget hurricanes are primarily there for the developers to push players out of areas that have got too many players in the event that too many get in one location maybe to have a battle or maybe just because they're all doing something the developers set hurricanes and they will destroy your boats or some of your buildings possibly if you don't have someone there to repair it or you're getting out the way if you're on your boat it's not 100 percent certain how they're exactly going to be implemented but we do know from a recent interview with rock paper shotgun developers did say they can implement the hurricanes anywhere on the map as and when they choose we also know from the treasure map pieces that you are going to have to match your treasure map to whatever size map this is and you should hopefully be able to find the treasure nearby but with a repeat of lots of these islands it does look like the developers are going to be adding more biomes and maybe possibly changing big chunks of this that's another reason maybe not to get too attached to some buildings as it looks like over the course of the next two years in early access they may change a lot of the stuff that's going on with the biomes or the land masses this is what they did with Arc Survival Evolved. On the island map they changed the biomes and people had to move out of the area before it got demolished. 
So there we go, that is everything I know about the maps in Atlas. Of course, as soon as we get actual gameplay, I'm going to show you the in-game map, what it definitely looks like. And all of this is subject to change as lots of this was done via previews. And who knows, the latest build that is going up onto Steam may actually contain some differences. But the general gist is this is the Atlas map and this is what you'll be exploring. I can't wait to set sail in Atlas, I am really hyped now. The game may absolutely be a stinker, but it has got me excited. So stay tuned for even more information, lots of guides and tutorials. I'm Joe Plays Games, I'll see you rat bags later.